Oh my god, this took way too long to make. <laughs> Alright guys, so I am here with a video that I'm going to be making. Um, it's about my scabbard that I made for my uh, Master Sword. Well, not my Master Sword, my Dark Link Sword that I bought about six months ago. I know in the video I said that I would make a video, or another video of me uh, making the, s the scabbard, but I'm not doing it till now. But I figured better late than never, so I figured that I would do that today. So let's get started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have a voiceover type thing along over the uh, time lapse of me making it. So you can see here that I start out with uh, a giant plank of wood. Uh, I'm using maple wood. I'm mainly using maple wood just because it's easier to sand. It's one of the easier woods to sand. And I have a... It's one inch thick. That's that's like what I um, bought. It's an inch thick. And depending on how you want to make it, if you're following the way I'm making it, then you want to have it be at least twice as long as your sword that you want to cover up. Probably a little bit more for some leeway when shaping it, but yeah, that's what you want to do. Um, you can see here that I'm actually using this orange piece of paper. What I did was, um, before I actually started making the scabbard, I drew up a bunch of different designs on paper, and then when I found one that I really liked, I sketched it out into a one s or a full scale size. So I just have like a template to go off of. Um, so yeah, you can see me referencing that uh, a little bit while I'm doing this. Uh, so the first thing that you want to do after you have your wood and stuff is you want to trace out. Uh, ha, bleh, you want to trace out your um, sword that you have onto the wood. This will be the line that we are going to carve into the wood to actually house the sword. So uh, when before you start like making the shape of the scabbard you want to have it first have it be like a big block so you can shave uh, down you can shave it down later so the first thing that we want to do is carve out the inside so we have access to that right at the beginning also when you're doing it this way you want to make sure that you get it as perfect as possible because what we're going to end up doing is cutting the plank of wood in half and gluing the two sides together so you'll want to make sure it's perfect as possible just so you know it fits nicely so here we can see I actually got a little help from my dad uh, we want to carve out the inside we're gonna want to carve out the inside of the wood now what I'm using or what my dad's using here is a Dremel type tool it's actually a special Dremel that is specifically used for carving wood um, but yeah, I guess you can use sandpaper, although it'll take a very long time. So I, if you have a Dremel or a saw or something, then I would definitely go with that versus sandpaper. But if you don't have anything else, uh, I guess sandpaper will work if you have, you know, like a whole day to spend on it. Also, if you're doing this, uh, you'll definitely want to wear earplugs if you're using a dermal because they can get pretty loud. Again, just make sure it's as perfect as you can get it, just so it fits nicely. Also, make sure you can uh, slide the sword in and out and you're not trapping it in there in any way. Uh, my camera actually died, I think, during the filming of this. So, yeah, they're cut out. Alright, so here you can see I just grabbed uh, some fabric that I'm going to be lining the inside of it with. Uh, I guess you can choose what color you want. I just chose black because the rest of the sword is going to be black and it would look weird if that wasn't black. Um, I used fleece. So, yeah, I guess you can use whatever you want, but I think fleece works the best just because it's soft and stretchy. Uh, if you... Lining the inside of it actually prevents uh, the scratching, prevents the sword from being scratched when it's pulled in and out of the sheath. 
so that is definitely a good thing. Also, it'll look better. Uh, if you like look down the side, it'll look better. If you look down the inside, it'll look better. It won't be it'll just like the raw wood. Also, it'll hold the sword better. Better. It'll have more of a concave feel, so it'll grip the sword with more pressure, I guess you could say. Also, uh, when you're making this, you'll you can see here. I did this for the first part. I just mentioned it. Um, I traced. I actually traced it from the template, um, but then I uh, left a couple of inches. I think it was half an inch to an inch, and then I just trimmed away anything that was unnecessary and I didn't need. Also here you can see, you're going to be able to see here in a sec, is that I actually roll the extra fabric that I have. I roll it underneath it, underneath the uh, outside fabric, so that gives it more of a concave feel like I was talking about before. Also make sure to do lots of test fits when you're uh, in this stage of making the scabbard, just so uh, you're, you know it'll fit right. When you're doing the test fits, you'll want the sword to be a little bit above the level of the wood. If you're looking at it, if you're looking at the wood from eye level, you want the sword to come out a little bit so it'll um, go into the other side of the scabbard, if that makes any sense. After you have everything, uh, all of the fabric laid out, you want to just apply some glue. You want to do it fairly fast so it doesn't dry out or anything. And then after you have the glue uh, set in, what I did was I just uh, put the sword in there and applied some pressure for like 10 or 15 minutes, I think it was. You can see here I'm watching some videos on my phone while I'm doing that. So here we can see me just, you know, doing the same thing with uh, the other side of the scabbard. Again, trimming it down and making it sure, making sure that it fits nice and snugly. I guess I will get a little ahead of myself in the video. Um, it doesn't show this part that I'm about to talk about, but what I did was we cut it in half and then we glued the two halves together using something sort of like wood glue. I guess you can use whatever glue you wish, but I think wood glue, wood glue would work the best, just because it's specifically de designed for wood itself. And then you'll want to let that dry at least overnight, if not longer, so it'll get a really good seal. Also, when you're letting it dry overnight with that wood glue, you're going to want to have it be clamped down or something to keep constant pressure on it, just like with the sword, only longer. So here we can see that we are now starting to get the shape of the scabbard and cutting away any unnecessary wood that we don't have. Um, when you're first starting, you can use saws like this to get the majority of the wood, but to get the real shape, you'll want to use like a sanding belt or some sort of sanding material. When you're starting out working with uh, this, these sort of saws, you want to make sure to trace uh, where you can cut on the outside of the wood itself, just so you don't accidentally leave yourself with not enough room for the sanding later. Uh, another note on the sanding, you can see here I'm, I started out with a circular sander, but you'll definitely not want to use that for the entirety of the project. You'll want to get something like this, which is a belt sander, or if you have a, like, desktop circular sander, I guess you could use that too, but I, th I think a belt sander would work the best. This part, this is the part that would actually take the longest uh, amount of time is the sanding part, which is horrendously long. It just takes so long. So uh, you'll be working on this for probably a couple hours, maybe like three or four, actually probably a lot more than that. I think I worked on mine for like 10-ish hours, if not more. Probably like 20 actually because I have so much footage of me just sanding and sanding and sanding. Um, you can see somewhere in here, in this footage right there, you saw on the side of the wood it's kind of burnt a little bit. You can avoid that by using a lower grit sandpaper which is more coarse and rough. You can use, or 
if it's a uh, old belt, don't just don't use it. Uh, the belt on this one right now is actually pretty old, so that's why I was getting burning. But I did go out and buy a new belt, so that helped out quite a bit. Also, when you're making or when you're sanding it down, make sure to be conscious of how you're holding it, because with this sort of belt sander, there's a wheel underneath the uh, sandpaper. So if you just hold it flat, then it will make a divot lower down than you expected. So just be careful how you sand it and what you're doing. So yeah guys, that's pretty much it for part one. If you want to see part two, you can click here on the video uh, screen or you can look it in the description. Or who knows, maybe I'll try out those cards things that Google's been talking about. So yeah guys, thanks for watching and I guess I'll see you later.